Okay, so I think we're going to get started. Um, so we wanted to welcome everyone. Unlike a live graduation, it's hard to know exactly who's here, but um, we wanted to welcome all the fellows, um, family members, um, and others who are joining us. So the fellows know this, but for those, um, for the other guests that we have, I'm Laura Silverman, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I'm one of the directors of the Rochester LEN program. Um, I'll be leading our graduation ceremony today with Abby Croning, who is a developmental pediatrician and also a director of the program. Um, we're so glad that you could come and celebrate the accomplishments of our LEN fellows today. And, you know, being at home, there's been a lot of time to reflect upon things. They've been a really, truly remarkable group of people, and we've been so fortunate to work with them over this year. Abby? We've also been extremely blessed and fortunate to work alongside an incredible team of faculty and of staff, many of whom you will meet during this ceremony. And I have the honor of just sharing for those of you who are not familiar with the LEND program, giving you a little overview of what we've been doing over the past year. Next slide. So the first question, what is LEND? And I know our fellows could explain this to you, but LEND stands for Leadership Education in Neurodevelopmental and Related Disabilities. It's an interdisciplinary program that teaches community professionals and healthcare professionals, educators, researchers, and clinicians how to be leaders, especially in the field of developmental disabilities. LEND focuses on collaboration and perspective taking across many different areas, including community engagement, policy, and advocacy. We're training our fellows um, to increase their skills as leaders, educators, and advocates for individuals with disabilities. Next slide. So, the LEND program is a government-funded program through the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, or MCHB, and MCHB is part of the Health Resources and Services Administration. There are 52 LEND programs across 44 states, as well as many other state and U.S. territory partnerships. In New York State, we are one of three LEND programs, and we are the only upstate program. Today, we are honoring 23 graduates from 11 different disciplines. And you can see those disciplines represented here. We have um, trainees, fellows from the disciplines of advocacy, audiology, dentistry, education, nursing, occupational therapy, physical therapy, public health, psychology, speech and language pathology, and social work. Okay, we also wanted to share some of the highlights of our year through pictures. So this was our first day of LEND, the orientation, and this is when we all met each other for the first time. From the start, we were struck by the openness and, uh, and honesty of all of you. Some groups are more reserved and less engaged. There might be long pauses and caution, especially on the first day. You weren't like that. You had a refreshing openness and rawness that felt genuine and courageous. All of you showed a willingness to share aspects of yourself right away from the start. And it was really remarkable and helped all of us learn, fellows and faculty. We all had the opportunity to learn from each other. Early on, we made a trip to the Museum of Disability History in Buffalo. It was a small but mighty site and the only museum of its type in the United States. We packed ourselves in and had the opportunity to learn about the evolution of care of people with disabilities throughout American history. We learned about some of the more unsavory moments of our history, such as the proliferation of institutions and the eugenics movement. Um, and then we moved on to lighter subjects like the portrayal of people with disabilities through pop culture objects. 
Our guide was a wealth of information and often pointed out the apparent irony in the things that we were viewing. One of my favorite facts from that day was um, that he showed us a Mattel Barbie doll and it was the first Barbie doll in a wheelchair. And then he pointed out that once she was made, girls around the country discovered that she actually couldn't fit in the Barbie dream house because it wasn't accessible. And I felt like that just sort of summed it up. And I think we learned a lot about accessibility throughout the year. We took a trip to the Galasano Autism Center and learned about early, the early intervention crisis in our county. We learned that young children were not receiving services in a timely manner, and we learned about funding and institutional shortfalls. We heard strong voices from community partners like the Children's Agenda and Daystar and heard about a parent's perspective on the impact of early intervention. We took this information and synthesized it and learned it as quickly as we could because <laughs> The next week, we had to venture out and visit the offices of our New York State Assemblymen and Women. We visited four offices and practiced our advocacy skills, sharing the facts that we had learned about early intervention services. Some of us were surprised by how much our representatives already knew, and we were humbled by the time that some of, us, some of them took to teach us about how to partner with elected officials and how to advocate for people with disabilities. On probably the coldest day of the year, all of you ventured out into Ro the Rochester winter to conduct accessibility assessments to get a sense of our own community. Measurements were taken, bathrooms and elevators were explored, and public transportation was assessed. We all learned that snow does not help accessibility and that there is a lot of progress to be made. Our group had bonded and experienced a lot together every Friday from September until March, and then everything changed. Coronavirus sent us all to our respective homes. For many of us, it derailed our plans, interrupted our training, and increased uncertainty about the future. Yet, we've met every Friday from 9 until 12.30 without fail, and I've been so impressed at our group's resilience, dedication, and commitment. It is unsettling to face uncertain times. That being said, when I've reflected upon my own life, most of my defining life decisions have occurred when plan A didn't work, when my plans and my paths were disrupted by in unforeseen ways. Sometimes plan B or C didn't work either. So I would encourage the fellows to use this time to reflect, consider options that come their way, and to think outside the box. All of our families that we met through the family experience surely taught us that amazing things can happen when life does not go exactly as planned. Channel that resilience and the openness to what is possible. We've learned from these families over and over again how important that is. An open mind, persistence, and creativity can get you far even if it doesn't feel that way. I wish all of you, the fellows, I wish you the best. You came to us with strong professional skills, advocacy skills, and lived experiences. I hope that you will leave us with stronger passion to make a difference in the lives of people with disabilities. I believe that you can do it and hope that you will return to us and share these experiences as you progress after LEND. Our family experience also taught us about the power of family and community. And so I wanted to take a moment to thank all of the family members, friends, community partners, and state, city, and local representatives who are here today. We have representatives from Senator Schumer's office and Mayor Warren's office. We thank everyone for being here and for supporting our fellows and our program. So now we have the privilege of presenting our fellows with an award and their LEND certificates. They have surely earned it this year. So I'd like to invite Terry Welsh to speak now. Terry is our education discipline coordinator and she will be introducing the Christine Burns Award.
Hey, Terry, you need to unmute. <laughs> Um, at this point in the program, we present a, a, a very special award, the Christine Burns Ideal Project Award. Um, but before we do, I want to take the opportunity to tell you a little about Christine Burns. And then Mark uh, Orlando, a little bit later, will provide some information about the Ideal Project. And um, finally, he'll have the honor of presenting the award. The Ideal Project exercise has been part of the LEND program for many years, but starting in 2017, the LEND faculty decided to initiate an award to recognize the year's outstanding project. The award was named after Christine Burns, who was instrumental in the development of the LEND program at the University of Rochester. Christine had served as the LEND training director and had been a LEND faculty member for a number of years. She had also been co-director of the Strong Center for Developmental Disabilities and the administrator for what is now known as the Division of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. Prior to her passing in 2016, Christine had worked in healthcare at the university in various capacities for more than 30 years. Christine was highly regarded at the Medical Center. She was a strong proponent of interdisciplinary work and was brilliant at service design and putting in place the pieces needed to bring a design to fruition, especially for the benefit of the communities we serve. A colleague of ours once gave what I thought was the perfect description of Christine. He said that she was a unique combination of vision and practicality. A unique combination of vision and practicality. That also aptly describes the purpose behind the project, the, excuse me, the ideal project, to conceptualize an innovative project and design the foundation that could actually make it a reality. Now it's my pleasure to introduce another faculty member, Mark, Orla Mark Orlando, who has been the driving force behind the IDEAL project and its major source of support for the trainees. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Chris was taken to, from us too early in our lives and I'm truly honored to know her and learn from her throughout her, my early years in Lend in Rochester. The IDEAL project allows LEND fellows to work on an interdisciplinary team to make a plan to solve an issue they see in the community as it relates to individuals with developmental disabilities and their families. The project is called an IDEAL project as we do not have time to implement the project during our calendar year together, but allows fellows to show their leadership planning skills, and to integrate their didactic learning to solve problems they see when working with children and individuals with developmental disabilities and their families. It's an honor to present this year's, um, uh, we had an unusual event this year that where we had two projects had equal votes from faculty as the best ideal projects. Both projects showed ingenuity, thoughtfulness, and appropriate planning for the virtual completion of their projects. The 2019-2020 LEND Fellow Ideal Project Certificates will go to Elizabeth Dollinger, Julia Kittle, and Mike Peterson for their, uh, Patterson for their project entitled Advocacy and Coordinated Care Interdisciplinary Specialty Team for Patients with Intellectual and or Developmental Disabilities and to Whitney Fairchild, Ali Jordan, and Juliana uh, Sladuski uh, for their project entitled Transportability, a ride-sharing app for families, children with disabilities. We should give a virtual clap for those individuals. And I would like to just take just a second to give you an idea about those two projects. 
First, we'll do advocacy and coordination care interdisciplinary specialty teams for patients with intellectual and developmental disabilities by uh, Beth, Julia, and Michael. Their project was as follows. People with intellectual and developmental disabilities often experience more complications during hospitalization. They have higher rates of hospitalization reutilization and lower patient satisfaction ratings. The pilot project would attempt to increase patient satisfaction and decrease hospital reutilization rates by implementing an advocacy and coordinating care interdisciplinary specialty team. The interdisciplinary professional team in conjunction with the patient and their families would coordinate their care throughout the hospital stay as well as coordinate follow-up care with outpatient providers. The second project, Transportability, a ride-sharing app for families and of children with disabilities by Whitney, Ellie, and Juliana, is a nonprofit ride-share mobile app for children and teenagers with autism spectrum disorder. This service would provide individuals and their families with a cost-effective, convenient, safe, and reliable mode of transportation to non-emergent medical appointments and community locations. The app would try to alleviate barriers which often occur to try to improve the quality of life of children with autism spectrum disorder and their families. Each group of LEND fellows will receive a, a, a certificate signifying their accomplishments with the ideal project. And once again, I'd like to have everybody at least video clap for those six individuals and those two projects. Some of projects in the past have been gone on to be further funded. So I would encourage and faculty would encourage all fellows to really look at their projects and decide to try to move them through uh, and change, uh, become leaders and change our communities and their communities in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. So now for your certificates. Next slide, please. So I'm sorry that we're not in person to be able to hand these to you directly, but each of you will be getting your certificate electronically. You have earned it. First, um, to honor our occupational therapy fellows, I would like to introduce our OT discipline coordinator, Liz Hebert. Hello, good morning. Uh, so I was asked to start by beginning to talk about what is occupational therapy. And it's probably the number one discipline here that has the most um, nebulous title for, for what we do. But OTs work with people of all ages um, to help them do the occupations they need to do and, and want to do. Um, and OTs use the term occupation very broadly. So it indicates um, what, you, what you're doing and how you occupy your time. So there's some focus areas of OT that are probably the most notable, um, including hand use, perceptual skills, self-care, um, how we respond to different sensory aspects of our lives. So for example, individuals with developmental dis disabilities, of course, like everybody, it'll vary on their age and um, where they are in their life, what they need to do and want to do. But maybe for the young child, the OT may focus on developing stability of their body so they can use their hands to play and feed themselves. And maybe with an older child, maybe focus on developing body awareness and motor planning so they can begin to sequence the steps to dress themselves. And with an adult, OTs might work on perceptual skills that they need to be able to follow a recipe to make a meal or read a bus schedule. Um, so that's OT in a synopsis. So I want to introduce my um, two LEND fellows this year. They're both graduates from NASRA's occupational therapy program. So they've both been there for five years and have earned their master's degree. So the first is Alyssa Angie, and she's from Pittsburgh, all the way across town. Um, so OTs are required to do two, three month 
field work affiliations in general, most of them uh, have one with children and one with adults. So for Lissa, her pediatric field work was at CP Rochester where she worked in the mostly the preschool program, but did do um, dabble with adults as well some. Um, in addition, Alyssa has been a one-to-one -one aide in school districts during her breaks, working with children with, with special needs. Also, Alyssa's research project um, while at NAS involved interviewing families with a child on the autism spectrum who participated in the, the writing programs at the Equa Center. So they interviewed their, their parents about the, their perspectives um, on the impact of the program. So, I cheated a little bit on this part. I'm supposed to talk about what they're passionate about. So I had some ideas of what they're passionate about, but I wanted to find out from them and make sure I was really um, portraying it. So I know Alyssa was very passionate about working with children and their families. She really involves building relationships with them, um, finding out what their special interests are. And she has a special creativity and tries to weave that into her therapy sessions with the, with the children. Overall, she's just passionate about getting to know people, what they think, how they feel, what makes them tick, um, enjoys spending time with her family and friends, exploring new places, and she is an animal lover, particularly a dog lover. So that is Alyssa, and I'm very um, proud to have her have completed the LEND program. Um, does Alyssa want to say anything? Hi, everybody. Good morning. I just wanted to um, thank everyone for being here. And I also wanted to share what led me to the LEND program. I was motivated to participate in the LEND program to develop a greater understanding about neurodevelopmental disabilities and ways to serve as an advocate for my clients when I begin career. And I definitely learned this throughout the time. Um, some things I'll take away. Um, I really valued being able to work with the other LEND trainees of different disciplines. It's given me a new perspective of how I can collaborate with other professionals and strengthen my own services by working with other team members. Um, additionally, from our instructors, my experiences with my LEND family and the many guest speakers, um, all these things will stick with me throughout my future. So I've really enjoyed my time with the LEND program. Thank you. So the next OT LEND fellow is um, Liz Murphy, who's also a NAS grad. She's from Black River, which is near Watertown. And her pediatric field work was at Mary Cariola Children's Center, where she worked with children um, with a variety of developmental needs, many with autism. Um, and in addition to her field work, Liz went on an interprofessional service trip with me to Ecuador, where we worked with um, some community senior groups, um, but it was a great interdisciplinary, interprofessional effort. Um, and upon graduation from Nazareth a week ago, our graduation, she was awarded um, a dedication to OT award, and that's given to the OT grad who's likely, who has committed and is likely to continue to um, contribute to the OT profession. So I see Liz is really passionate about universally access accessibility, certainly in terms of physical abilities, visual abilities. Um, and she's also very much an OT at heart and passionate about helping children and adults with disabilities become more independent in whatever they define as, as being independent, whatever, whatever they want to be and do. Um, so I, Let's say it's really been a pleasure to work with Liz and Alyssa over this year and they both have I've seen tremendous growth certainly over five years at Nazareth but in this one year at at Lend um, I think they both started out as sort of fairly quiet young ladies and um, have certainly become much more vocal in sharing their thoughts with the group and um, I've seen them work side by side with other disciplines as part of Lend and take on some leadership roles and some of the different projects, I'd say particularly in the those arena veils, they were um, definitely part of the um, group in, in organizing and making sure those um, went through to fruition. So they both need to take um, a national certification exam, as many of you do. And for a while, those testing centers were closed, but now they're 
opened and allowing them to take some of the tests with social distancing. Um, so I know Lisa has her test scheduled for August, which is when most of our students, Liz is still working through the bureaucracy of getting accommodations. Um, but hopefully they'll be able to relax for a few months now and do some studying in there, get ready so that in the fall they, they can actually find a job and, and begin to really fulfill their dreams as OTs. Thank you. Liz, did you want to say anything? Sure, thank you to everyone for being here today. Um, so I was led to LEND because it came very highly recommended by Dr. Heber and um, the other OT um, fellows um, from last year came and presented to us. Um, it really struck a chord with me because I am very passionate and enjoy working with individuals with neurodevelopmental conditions across the lifespan, so children and adults alike. Um, I've worked really closely with um, individuals with CP, autism, Down syndrome, other conditions, Parkinson's disease, um, so different conditions. Um, and then what I'll gain from LEND, definitely the biggest thing is the perspectives from other disciplines and particularly their role with individuals with developmental conditions. I think that when you think of the team members that some of these families and children have, you don't always think of all the disciplines that were represented in LEND. So it was really great to get all of those perspectives and learn about their role. And I think that that will help me strengthen my practice later on to know who to refer to when I have questions about things or need help on things and really develop a really strong um, interprofessional um, collaboration with others later in my practice. Great, thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, Liz and Alyssa. Okay, next we have advocacy, and I'd like to introduce our discipline coordinators, Carrie Birkin and J.D. Florence. Good morning. Um, Cue the barking dog. Um, welcome. I'm happy to be here today at this visual platform to talk about the advocacy discipline. So our advocacy is, or our discipline is all about um, the lived experience. And so um, it's sort of divided up into the family lived experience and the self-advocacy lived experience. And we're all about team mentality on our uh, in our discipline so there's two of us so i am the discipline coordinator that mostly oversees the family piece of it and then we have jd flores who oversees the self-advocacy piece of it and i know she has some things to say so jd i was just gonna say that we make y'all look good <laughs> we're the best discipline if this was a competition we'd win um but all in fun and spirit because we're all family um but what we like to bring to the table is, is like Carrie said, the lived experience and how to really make this as realistic as possible so that hopefully everyone involved uh, leaves a little, more, a little bit more knowledgeable of what the real life is like for folks with disabilities. Thank you. Said the way that only you can. Um, so our first, um, fellow is Antonio. He represented our family um, discipline advocate. He has brought a unique lived experience. He has a wealth of knowledge about the autism world because of his sibling. Um, he also has a great understanding of physical disability because of his lived experiences. Um, he also has a unique perspective of systems because he is a disability service provider or DSP who provided community, community habilitation or COMHAB. Um, so not, if anything, we learned a lot of acronyms from Antonio, but, um, but also we, uh, we got to really see what it's like to have someone who has a lived experience and then also chooses that as a profession and weaves that kind of in. Um, I know that he is looking into med school, so he has his eye on big endeavors, which is also exciting, and that will allow him to enter into yet another system with his lived experience and, so, and sharing that with the world. So we were very happy to have Antonio with us this year. Not only did he learn, but he taught. So thank you, Antonio. And Antonio, do you wanna say anything? Hi, can you hear me? Thank you so much, Carrie. Those were really, really kind words uh, that you uh, 
you mentioned. Uh, I just want to say hello to everyone and uh, to thank you all for being here. Um, so I, uh, I was really, really, really fortunate and really glad to have had the experience with Lend. Um, I, so I used to work in, uh, for an EBA provider and how I kind of got into it was there was a, uh, a coworker of mine who uh, ended up working with development pa pediatrics. Her name was Valerie Smith. And I kept in contact with her uh, even after she left. And um, because she was like a really cool person to talk to and she had like a lot of knowledge. And then I was telling her, I was like, you know, I've heard a lot of really, really, really cool things about um, like developmental peds. And uh, she introduced me to this idea of like the LEN program. I started like reading into it and I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is a really cool program. I mean, this is something that's uh, interdisciplinary. I mean, we're all coming from really like diverse and distinct disciplines, but at the same time, we're like, we're all kind of passionate about the same thing. And I thought to myself, you know, I was, I was just finishing my undergrad. I was taking a year off uh, to get some like working experience uh, before I applied for med school, which fun fact I actually am doing right now. Um, and it is a like, very, very, long process. Um, but I uh, you know, trying to stay the course, stay resilient, even through the whole COVID thing, and I'm just trying to put my best foot forward. But so it was it was really great. I, I, you know, when I got into it, and I started like hearing about everybody's background, um, I started like realizing like, we're all like pretty similar, like kind of feel the same way about this. And it was like really refreshing too. you know, I remember, like Tina's speech was just absolutely amazing. Uh, the Disability Museum was opened my world, um, you know, because I, I didn't know about the history being so, uh, you know, it was a pretty bad time back then. And so it helps me kind of understand now how things have, you know, where we're at now, with it, but also like where some of the gaps that we can continue to try to, to, to fill. Um, so I mean, like overall, it was just like a wonderful, like I loved working with, you know, in different teams and different projects, try not to ramble too much because I know I have a tendency just to ramble. <laughs> but uh, if there's one thing like I can take away from this and like I think it's like really important is just like sound kind of cheesy because it you know has to do with my discipline but like advocacy is like so important you know like um, I, a lot of times like we're having conversations about like some of the disparities with like races and ethnicities uh, some of the disparities with socioeconomic status and with disability. I just kept thinking to myself the whole time I was like boy like th these are really like you know, tough things that we're dealing with in our society. And like, I really wish there was something I could do about it, you know, but I always feel like, well, it's not really much I can do. I kind of felt like I didn't have that ability. But then I got, being in the LUN program was like, it helped me realize that I, like I can, like I can be an advocate, you know? And I, I think, you know, as long as everything like goes well with like med school and I find the time for it, like I want to be able to continue doing this kind of thing. You know, I have a really you know, humble experience with, you know, my family coming from a low income background, but also my brother uh, having uh, autism. And, uh, it's, it's, and, I, and, I, and I live with him too, and I've grown up with him. So I've kind of been like the big brother. And so I, 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 I kind of feel it, you know, I, I really strongly empathize. So it's just great. You know, I, advocacy is, I just think it's uh, really, really big and really important. And I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is my friend and a happy, you know, graduate of the LEN program, Lutetia Andre Doucette. Um, she, we're going to call her the comeback kid because she tried um, last year to complete this with us and um, she had some changes in her job and so she wasn't able to finish, but she came back and like a great comeback kid and, and finished strong. And she made sure to, uh, to always challenge us and to keep us, you know, thinking about the historical context of things in terms of the law, in terms of different things that we've learned. Um, you know, she kept us on her toes and I'm so happy that she was able to join us and, and finish out strong. Lutisha, is there anything you'd like to add? Sure, I'd like to thank my mama, Black Jesus, um, JD, <laughs> for keeping me sane. Um, but, you know, I really, um, really appreciated being with y'all. It's been a very interesting and different experience. And I don't think I'll ever have experience like this ever again in my life. And I hope maybe to recreate that somewhere else in my life because it's, this is so needed. Um, and I feel like I have grown. Um, but also knowing 
just each and every one of you have kind of shaped and challenged me. You know, I don't feel the same way about dentists, maybe, that I felt when I first started. And I hope, you know, that we continue to keep in contact. And I think, and I want to thank JD for recommending this program for me. Because I first was like, didn't know what it was, what it was about. And I'm just so grateful that y'all allowed me to come back. And hopefully, you know, I didn't hurt people's feelings too much um, or <laughs> was too loud. I don't know. But thanks again. Thank you so much. We're glad you could come back. And congratulations. Now I have also, so our, our year this year was, was kind of special. We had a bigger team than we've ever had before. So we had three fellows. Um, and to close our group out, we, we have Michael Patterson, um, who is definitely a good closer. He always has a one punchline that kind of knocks us off our feet. Um, and this was a huge leap for him. Um, he hadn't been in the classroom in a long time. So, you know, taking the chance to join Lynn was an, was an amazing experience for us to have him, but for him as well. Um, and I just want to end this with, uh, was the juice worth a squeeze, Michael, for, for what you did for us and Lynn? Took my one line, JD, but it's okay. <laughs> I got a lot of them. But yes, I would. I, I would like to add that uh, I appreciated the Lynn program probably more than anybody. You know, the opportunity to see if I had a future in self advocacy that was um super intriguing. I I, I got to give a special shout out to you. And Carrie, y'all were the first two people I met, the first people who gave me an interview and just gave me a chance to put myself back into that classroom setting to test myself again, uh, a setting that I had been away from for a long, long time. So I had to give y'all a special shout out. And um, I mean, the learning program was great. You got people from different backgrounds. We all coming together, trying to see if we can come up with some common solutions for some of the societal problems that we have going on. Um, and it gave me a chance to try to begin to give the voiceless a voice, which I always wanted to do, but never could figure out the avenue to go about to get that done. So that was super intriguing about the, the LEARN program for me. And I mean, what I what I walked away from it, kind of thinking and holding on to the most prevalent thing was, I think that uh, no matter what background you come from or profession that you choose, uh, when the cause is big enough, real people can sit down and come up with real solutions for modern day problems. And I I, I thought that was great about the group. Um, no matter if you were a PhD or no matter if you were associates. We all sat down and, 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 you know, we hashed things out until we came up with a, a real problem for what's really going on out there. And that's just to show that that could go on in many settings if, if people would be able to come together, how the LIM program puts people together to be able to accomplish those type of goals. Um, and, and I think from week to week, from every session, I think everybody went home a little smarter, a little bit more aware. And I'm um, just that much more motivated to do what we came there to do to make a difference. And uh, I think the biggest thing I take away from Linda is, you know, individually, we can chip away at things, but um, united, you know, we can knock walls down. And I saw that in the LIM program, and I'm, and I'm going to leave thinking that, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to leave believing in that. So... If the question was, was the juice worth the squeeze? Hell yeah, the juice was worth the squeeze. So I'm going to go from this limp program, and instead of, you know, killing two birds with one stone, I'm going to start putting one hat on two heads, and I'm going to start knocking them dead. Thank you, limb program. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> um, 
To honor our audiology fellows, I'd like to introduce discipline coordinator Mark Orlando. Thanks, Abby. As uh, everybody knows, audiology is dealing with hearing loss and the consequences of, of hearing loss, which uh, many uh, children and uh, um, adults have. Uh, if we all live old enough, uh, uh, long enough, we will all have hearing loss. I should start my presentation out like this, so Julia and uh, Allie recognize me as I've been wearing a face mask, and they have been wearing face masks and working every day uh, since in the office since uh, uh, March. So I'll take that off so you can hear me. Who are we doing first, uh, Abby? Allie, as you might know, Allie grew up and family still rely, uh, uh, resides in the Rochester area. Allie completed her undergraduate degree at SUNY Plattsburgh, and she graduated with her clinical doctorate degree in audiology from the University of Pittsburgh on April 25th of this year, where she also completed a LEN fellowship. She completed her clinical training at two university hospitals, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, and her fourth year externship at University of Rochester Medical Center. She is passionate about working with individuals of all ages and individuals with develop, uh, disabilities and their families. She first encountered, I had to ask her this, she first encountered the disability community while volunteering at an after school program to introduce various types of sports to children with autism spectrum disorder while she was a senior at Plattsburgh University. It was this experience that sparked her interest in working with individuals and their families with the disability community. Allie, congratulations. Thank you. Um, that was very kind of you. Um, of course, I have to follow Mike because obviously, how can I follow that speech? <laughs> um, but I just want to thank everyone, um, all the trainees, all the faculty, all the staff for this amazing year. Um, so what led me to LEND and St. for Julia, it's a little different. LEND is actually encompassed within our fourth year externship. Um, and it provided a really unique opportunity because not only did I learn about audiology and expand my knowledge um, within my own discipline um, throughout this past year, I also got to learn more about other disciplines and other individuals that I may work with on interdisciplinary teams as I start my professional career. And I would say the biggest thing that I took out of this LEND program is advocacy. Um, I always thought that advocacy had to be really this grand um, gesture. You know, you, you had to go to a march or you had to go to a conference to try and make a difference. And I learned pretty quickly on that it can be more individualized, more one-on-one -on -one and, you know, working with a family or working with an individual um, to help, you know, them with a specific issue or something that they want to change. So um, thank you everyone for this year. I really enjoyed it. Um, and best of luck to all of you in your future. I'm just trying to unmute my microphone. Uh, for those that have suspected, and Julia tells us all, uh, Julia grew up in a small town of Aaronsburg, Pennsylvania, about 30 miles outside of uh, State College, Pennsylvania. I'm a Penn State graduate, uh, so uh, we are Penn State. Uh, she completed her undergraduate degree uh, from the University of Pittsburgh and graduated from James Madison University with her clinical doctor degree in audiology on May 7th, a week ago uh, of this year. She completed her clinical training at Geisinger Medical Center a VA hospital in West Virginia, and her fourth year externship at University of Rochester Medical Center. Julia also is passionate about working with individuals of all ages and loves the time she spends in clinic working with individuals with disabilities and their families. She likes to participate in research activities and said she's always a sucker for a good puzzle. She comes to the disability community through personal experience as she watched her mother advocate for her brothers who struggled in school. Is this personal experience that molds her into uh, to advocate for others? Congratulations, Julia. Thank you, Dr. Orlando. Can you guys hear me? 
Okay. Um, so just like Ali said, I was led to the LEN program from my internship at the University of Rochester. And when I learned about the opportunity to participate in LEN, I was very excited to get to work in an interdisciplinary setting and learn about people with disabilities and how to sort of treat them clinically. And I think what I learned that I didn't really expect was all of the advocacy, similar to how Ali said. Um, to expect so much of the family experience out of it and learning, you know, the lived experience. And, um, you know, I think I always thought I was an advocate for my patients beforehand. And I learned just how different advocacy can be and how it can come in many different, you know, shapes and forms. And um, I was very interested to learn about the policy as well. So I think I'll take all of that with me in my future as a clinician and hopefully I will be a better clinician from my experience at the LEN program. I'd like to just say one other thing. It's unfortunate that uh, the COVID pa pandemic has occurred this year. This is the first time that both of my fellows have not had a job upon graduation. Both of Ali and Julia will be returning home, seeking state licensure, and searching for employment, hopefully from facilities where they'll both be able to demonstrate their knowledge and expertise when assisting individuals with developmental disabilities and their family. To both of you, good luck and stay in touch. Congratulations. Okay. Next, we have dentistry, and I'd like to introduce the discipline coordinator, Lisa DeLucia. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, I had the um, good fortune of having three fellows this year, and it's very interesting. They're all, uh, they all have international backgrounds and all left wonderful, warm, seemingly tropical places to come and extend their studies in Rochester. Um, so uh, pediatric dentistry is an age-defined specialty, and um, we provide both comprehensive and therapeutic care for infants and children through adolescence. And we also um, have the privilege of caring for patients with special health care needs. And they really um, fall within our category of pediatric dentistry, and so it's not uncommon for pediatric dentists or uh, dentists in general treating individuals with special health care needs to have patients through the lifespan. And so it's, it's a really special um, privilege that we have. So um, my fellows, as others have uh, already noted, have undergone a great deal of change with the uh, COVID crisis, especially in the field of dentistry. Um, they've all been um, very uh, hardworking and providing care with uh, <laughs> heavy hazmat gear to our, um, our underserved in the Rochester area who really have a hard time accessing dental care under normal circumstances, but are also having an especially difficult time um, during this crisis where general dental offices are closed. And so I thank them very much for their um, you know, compassion and care of, of our patients. Our first fellow is Sam, Dr. Sam Abdel Salam. Um, he is from Alexandria, Egypt, and um, he completed dental school in Egypt and then uh, arrived in the US to complete a one-year urgent care fellowship at Eastman Institute for Oral Health and is currently in his two-year residency in advanced education and general dentistry. Um, he's been a, a very familiar and friendly face at our AADMD meetings um, and has been a uh, frequent volunteer at our Special Olympics Healthy Athlete Screening. Uh, he uh, has spent a great deal of time at the Complex Care Center in their dental uh, arm and uh, really uh, has blossomed in this program. He hopes to utilize his connections in Egypt back home to enhance the oral health of uh, individuals in that country with IDD. And so uh, thank you, Sam, for all your efforts uh, over the past year. Sam, would you like to say something? Okay, uh, so um, first of all, I want to thank um, everybody for uh, giving me this opportunity for being here during this year. I learned, I learned a lot of things. I feel like I improved a lot for like um, my skills and my knowledge about the IDD 
population. And um, what led me to the Berlin program that as a part of my training and my residency in Eastman Dental, uh, I work in a um, complex care center and I found my passion there to uh, work with a patient with uh, intellectual and mental disabilities. And, um, and during this time, a lot of my um, a lot of my co-resident and ex fellows like um, Dr. Hidari, Dr. Abdel Hadi, and uh, Dr. Pranova, they highly recommend to join the the Lend Fellowship Program to get more knowledge and experience uh, to help me to um, serve the IDD population more efficient way. And I believe after the Lend, I can work better in my future plan to can spread the awareness between my colleagues in my field and help the patient with um, IDD to get the treatment they deserve. And um, as Dr. Lucia mentioned about my future plan, I would like to uh, uh, have like, um, to communicate with, uh, some, with, my, uh, with some people who have the same passion back home in Egypt to um, establish like a community or organization that's gonna be small, like gonna be an atom for uh, making something big in the future. And then thank you everybody. And thank you for, for, for everything. Like I will miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next we have Dr. Sari Manap. Um, she is a pediatric dentist originally from Jakarta, Indonesia. She completed dental school in Indonesia and then um, received training at NYU and University of Michigan um, in a postdoctorate fellowship in orthodontics. Um, she has uh, received a great deal of training in Rochester. Uh, completing an advanced education and general dentistry residency, um, and also uh, pediatrics fellowship, uh, pediatrics residency, and some time at the Complex Care Center. Um, she has been heavily involved in the American Academy of Developmental Medicine and Dentistry in our student chapter, AADMD, um, and is a uh, frequent volunteer to Special Olympics. I can always count on seeing her name on my volunteer list. She's currently in private practice, and um, it's, it's been wonderful to uh, have her in this program. Um, Sari and I go way back. Um, she first, uh, during her fellowship, um, she spent a great deal of time with me in the operating room. And uh, so we uh, had the uh, good fortune of getting to know each other well. So um, it's been great to see her grow in this program. And um, I thank her for all the efforts that she's put into uh, getting as much as she can from this program. So thank you, Sari. Thank you. Um, like to go yes, ahead. <laughs> you guys can hear me. Last time I can you hear me now? You're good. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, this uh, program is uh, one of the best that I ever had for my training. Um, uh, where I come from, Jakarta, Indonesia, we don't really see people with disabilities, so I didn't. Uh, it's more of their hiding them in the house. So I don't really see them often in the clinic or during my training. So with this experience, since I came and to Rochester six years ago, I remember my first patient was uh, with the disabilities and I was really worried that I, I won't be able to treat um, the person. And it turned out that it was really um, rewarding and I had a good experience and ever since that my interest um, treating uh, patients with disabilities um, really really strong and um, and I'm glad that I met Dr. Delusia and all others uh, of the core co-resident who went into the LEN program and I'm glad that I, I got in and and it's just the most rewarding experience ever. And uh, the LEN program really shaped out the way I'm thinking and the way I'm acting towards my career and my personal life. I feel that I don't know a lot. <laughs> I feel like, oh, I have known nothing. And, but I learned so much from other fellows and um, makes you very humble. And the collaborative uh, training with other trainees uh, made me more about uh, advocacy, leadership, and working together as the team. I was really uh, having great experience working as a team with Antonio and Sam. And uh, 
we got to know each other very well. Um, the biggest rewarding experience was knowing the amaz amazing trainees of this program, which I know I can reach um, whenever I need further advices and to gain our friendships. And the family experience, um, it was really priceless. Um, I will bring my experience in learning from Len to be more organized, fair, and passionate a clinician to my patient to improve their uh, their care. And um, this is very special because I wanted to dedicate it um, this for my mom and because she passed away a while ago. And I wanted to thank Dr. Rideout, uh, Kathy Rideout from the nursing, the dean for the nursing, and Dr. DeLucia to help me get through this. And I wanted to thank everybody too. Thank and you. yes, so be very proud name, of you. Uh, yeah, my name is still uh, the old name right here, so <laughs> it's no longer Azubi anymore, and it's Manapia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Last but not least, we have um, Dr. Farah Dawood. Um, she is a native of Mombasa, Kenya, and completed dental school in India. Uh, she uh, somehow got to Rochester and <laughs> wanted to complete a fellowship at Eastman Institute for Oral Health, um, and she did that in community dentistry, um, also completed the Advanced Education General Dentistry Program, and has done a fellowship in pediatric dentistry. Um, we are very excited that she will be continuing her education in pediatric dentistry as a resident in a program in Florida. And um, I have had a, a great deal of interaction with Farah and have found her to be a, uh, a strong leader and um, someone who really uh, puts her whole heart into every effort. So she's completed the team trainer program with the Special Olympics. Um, she, again, just like the, our other two fellows, are always, she's always a name that I can see on my volunteer list almost immediately as soon as a call for volunteers goes out. Um, and she's also served in a special capacity in the AAD. DMD by being our student leader um, in recent times um, and has put a great deal of effort into our annual Spread the Word to End the Word uh, uh, event organization. And so I thank her for that. Um, uh, Farah also spent a great deal of time with me in the operating room caring for young children and individuals with disabilities. And um, it's been a pleasure to have her in our program. And I wish her all the best in residency. Thank you. Okay, Farah, would you like to mention anything? Thank you, Dr. Delusha, you're too kind. <laughs> I first heard about LEND when I joined the Eastman Institute for Oral Health a few years ago. Um, when the past fellows recommended it to me based on my interest and passion. My interest further developed um, during my involvement with AADMD and the Special Olympics, where I got to know more about LEND from my faculty, Dr. Delusha who has always been my guiding light from the day I met her. From the moment I interviewed for LEND with four very fine and knowledgeable women, till to date, I have been so fortunate to have met a wonderful group of faculty and fellows and have developed some amazing lifelong friendships that I will be taking with me. LEND has helped me widen my experience outside of the patient dentist setting by engaging in the lives of those truly living the experience that no book can teach. As a professional, one usually has an inherent tunnel vision as to how they would approach their specialty when working with a person with a disability. And while there's nothing wrong with that, this past year has truly broadened my perspective now that I have learned how people from all the disciplines that are part of LEND would approach them in their own way. I will forever cherish the memories and friendships I have made during this past year, and I will truly miss you all in our Friday morning LEND sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations to both of you. It's been really wonderful to work with you and I appreciate all the hard work you've put into both the didactic component of this program and uh, your clinical life outside of Friday mornings. So <laughs> thank you so much. Congratulations. Now to honor our education fellow, I introduce Terry Welsh, Education Discipline Coordinator. Thank you. 
Um, Samantha Hyde is this year's Education Discipline Fellow, and she's originally from Mohawk, New York, and, and moved to Rochester, uh, the Rochester area, uh, a few years ago to attend St. John Fisher College. Um, Samantha's currently a master's degree student at the college, and uh, she has the distinction of being our first fellow from St. John Fisher College. True to Samantha's character, um, she's in a very ambitious master's program. She's seeking teaching certification in special education, along with certification in the specialty STEM area of physics. It's quite a combination. Uh, Samantha was slated to do student teaching during the second semester, and because of this, would have needed to miss several lens sessions. Um, but with COVID-19 came a sudden change in plans. In particular, um, it put a stop to her student teaching, which uh, Samantha will need to complete later this fall, and which also will delay her teaching certification. Likewise, it caused the cancellation of the trainees' trips to Washington, D.C. for the policy seminar. However, as usual, Samantha managed to find an optimistic view of the situations, saying that this allowed her to participate in more LEND sessions. She also noted that uh, although the fellows did not go to Washington, she found the assignment of developing a policy statement to share with legislators to be a particularly valuable and, and very insightful experience for her. From the time of our first meeting, I've been impressed with Samantha's true diligence in balancing school, part-time work, and LEND, and her willingness to step out of her comfort zone. She sought out the program without knowing anyone who had been in LEND, and unlike candidates from Nazareth or SUNY Brockport, none of Fisher's faculty had been involved in LEND either. Samantha. I am so glad that you decided to become a LEND trainee. I know that you're passionate about education and teaching. The field greatly needs educators who recognize the big picture, big picture issues and who can effectively advocate for all students at the local, state, and national levels. I'm excited to see what's ahead for you. I wish you the best, Samantha, and congratulations on completing the LEN Fellowship. Would you like to say uh, a few words, Samantha? Um, yeah, thank you, Terry. Um, so I found the LEN program through sort of an email that was just kind of passed along to different professors at my school, and somehow um, it got to me, and it it just seemed like the perfect way for me to expand on the education that I was already getting at Fisher. Um, it being a dual certification program, I had, I was sort of missing some sort of element from the special ed side of things because we were so focused on just making sure that we could get both. So I wasn't quite reaching what I wanted um, from the special ed side of everything. So I, the LEND program really gave me that and um, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to to expand my learning. Um, I think the biggest thing that I'll take away from it is the, the interdisciplinary aspect and working with a team. Um, you know, in my program at Fisher, we're in a cohort where everyone in all of my classes is doing the exact same thing. Um, and more specific to, to my class, we all happen to be in STEM fields. So we were all um, science and math people. So all of our classes were very very much the same, a lot of the same perspective, but then coming over here to the LEND program, everybody was coming from different backgrounds and um, had different strengths. And I think I learned a lot, you know, I learned a lot from the classes, but I really learned a lot from my classmates and different perspectives that they had. Um, and I think that'll really help me understand the complexity of all of my students' situations and really give them the best um, educational experience. So thank you all. and. I'll miss you guys. Terrific, thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, so next we have nursing, and I'd like to introduce Kathy Rideout, who is the discipline coordinator, and also acknowledge two clinical supervisors who participate, 
who participate in the program, um, Lynn Cole and Holly Brown. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Um, I have, um, I've been informally a part of LEND for, um, for many, many years, um, but this was the first year that I had the opportunity to have a formal role um, as the um, interim discipline coordinator, and it has been an absolutely wonderful experience. Um, I don't think I need to have to educate anyone about what nursing is all about, um, particularly um, given this year that we have been through. Um, for those of you who don't know, the World Health Organization designated 2020 as the year of the nurse and midwife. And um, that was part re recognition of the 200th birthday of, of Florence Nightingale this year that we just celebrated last week, or actually this week on Wednesday. And, um, and the first year that a global world report was just released on, on nursing. Um, you know, I, I've said a couple different times in the past couple of weeks that, um, you know, everyone's been using, you know, phrases like this has been an unprecedented time. You know, it's a time of uncertainty. Um, you know, we've been met with unsurmountable challenges. And, and I just continue to say that, that nurses have always worked in unprecedented times. And um, they always work in areas of uncertainty um, with a wide variety of of um, patients and families and interactions. And, um, and you know, nurses and all healthcare workers, all of these disciplines have always been our heroes. And, um, you know, it, it um, unfortunately takes something like this to really bring that to the forefront for, you know, for all the disciplines that we're celebrating today. But, um, but it has been, you know, a time that we really have worked, have worked sincerely together. So um, we actually have five, um, uh, fellows that I want to recognize today. Um, the first is um, Liz Dollinger, and Liz is originally from Long Island, New York, but she has lived in Rochester for the past 11 years. Um, she became a nurse in 2011 and has worked as a, um, as a bedside nurse in neurology and psychiatry, and she has taught at, um, continues to teach as an adjunct professor of nursing at St. John Fisher. She graduated um, with her master's last December um, as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner and is currently working as a psych um, nurse um, practitioner at Easter Seals, um, serving individuals with dual diagnosis. And those are individuals that have um, intellectual and developmental disabilities as well as mental health um, issues. Um, she is passionate about her patients and their needs. Her favorite thing about being a nurse is advocating for her patients. Her goal is to help individuals and their families navigate the healthcare systems and help create policy changes that'll make them more streamlined and accessible. Throughout the program, um, Liz has um, really shared some wonderful personal examples of living with a family member, her brother, that has developmental disabilities and, and really made herself very vulnerable in, in several of those conversations. And I really appreciated her honesty and, and um, really um, you know, contributions as she shared those, those situations. Um, her focus is in the field of psychiatry, in the field of psychiatry has helped her to really include the whole person in when she's caring for individuals. So congratulations, Liz. It, was, it has been wonderful um, meeting you. Thank you. And um, I feel the same way about meeting you as well, um, Dr. Rideout. And um, I just wanna say thank you to everybody for the, this opportunity. When I, um, uh, Beth Kiss was the one who uh, probably about a year, a year ago or so now had um, said to me, we should look into this LEND program <laughs> um, because we had uh, over at St. John Fisher, they had started the um, Golisano Institute for Developmental Disability Nursing. And so we were kind of looking for every opportunity to um, learn and grow more. And I think I kind of got into it not knowing what it was about as much. And was once um, it started, I was really happy that I was able to become a part of something like this and have so many opportunities. I think that working on the Ideal Project with um, Mike and Julie was probably one of my favorite things about this um, program. And the thing I was, I was looking forward to the most was the trip to DC. <laughs> um, and I was really bummed out about that. I, I 
um, as, as um, Dr. Wright had said, I really want to become more involved in um, healthcare policy and, at, and advocating and making some system changes and things along those lines so that we can make it easier for people to navigate the systems um, personally Yes, it's been very, it's, it's been a struggle for even um, from childhood into adulthood, I would say, for my brother with um, developmental disabilities, just figuring out the system. I mean, there's things we're still finding out now. So, um, and this program, LEND, has helped me kind of open up my eyes and talking to people from other disciplines and sharing other, sharing ideas about what to do, how to do things um, differently, um, working within the systems and different approaches has really been great. And I think my definitely my favorite thing about this program is meeting everybody meeting all of you and being able to um share with you and grow with you so thank you thank you liz our next fellow is um, um beth kiss uh kit um, beth is an associate professor at wakeman school of nursing at st john fisher and is an adult focused nurse practitioner at the golisano institute of developmental disability nursing she is a family nurse practitioner at Strong Memorial Hospital, working in the Wilmont Cancer Center, specializing in surgical and medical oncology. Uh, she has in the past and is currently the clinical director for Special Olympics in their health promotion department. And she has worked with the Waterford Institute of Technology to integrate disability curriculum into the Wegman School of Nursing. She has also built an online COVID-19 education for direct support personnel that was deployed throughout Chicago and Rochester area. She is passionate about filling the gap in healthcare for individuals with disabilities. Um, she wants to give them the same access for healthcare as individuals that do not have disabilities. Her interest um, um, in filling this gap um, has served as a foundation for her work um, as she's helped to develop the, um, the Golisano Institute for Developmental Disability Nursing at St. John Fisher. In this work, um, she's well positioned to integrate her clinical and scholarly interests with an important um, institutional priority. And I know that both her and, and Liz have spent a great deal of time um, you know, working with um, Dr. Brown in doing this. Um, this work also permits her the opportunity to grow her professional and academic influence um, regionally and beyond and is a great area of national importance. It has been great getting to know you, Beth, as well, and, um, and working with you alongside of you. Congratulations, Beth. Thank you, Dr. Rideout. Um, it's been wonderful getting to know you. Um, and um, so what led me to LEND, it's, it was really interesting. I didn't, I didn't really know that LEND existed at first. What, what I heard was that a group of um, professionals in the field of disabilities or experts in the field of disabilities got together on Fridays and, um, and talked about the field of disabilities. And I said, well, I, I really want to be part of that. So I, I had a name and I sent an email and I said, can I join you guys? And um, realized very quickly that it was a fellowship. And I said, well, I better apply to this. And um, I applied very quickly and then emailed Liz Dollinger and said, we've got to be part of this. And what I wanted to get out of it was, was to learn from the experts and connect with others to care for the individuals um, with disabilities. Um, and I wanted to learn from experts in the field that were different from mine and make those connections. I wanted to gain a greater understanding um, of what the gaps were in the field of disabilities um, and, and learn how to leverage the resources that I had available to me, but most of all, what I can realize that I'm taking away from LENS is a lot of good memories, a lot of new friendships that I've forged, and um, a lot of people that I know will advocate with me in the future as we do the good work that we have to do. So um, I'm grateful for all the friends that I've made and um, all of the um, work that I know that we're gonna do in the future, and that's exciting to me. So thank you. Uh, next is um, Rachel Krause. I actually have known Rachel for, um, for decades um, in her role as a pediatric nurse and as a pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, she lives in Rochester, New York with her husband, 
and her three adorable rescue puppies. Um, she is um, currently, she's had multiple positions as a pediatric nurse practitioner over the years, um, but recently, um, it's been a little over a year now, became a pediatric nurse practitioner at the Neurodevelopmental Behavioral Center, um, the Curse Center. And um, when, I, when I heard that Rachel took this position, it was like, this is perfect for her. Um, I know this has always been a, a love of hers, and I know that she really feels like home. Um, when, when asking her what she is passionate about, I, I just want to read to you what she wrote. Um, she wrote that she, um, her, she's passionate about using my powers for good and not evil. Um, when you make choices every day, we have options to be someone who can help or not help others. I truly believe that we must do what we can to support and lift one another up. Um, we are not all perfect, but if we continue to strive to use our powers for good and not evil, we can make a difference to someone to ourselves at the moment. Um, Rachel has, has been an incredible care provider for many, many years, and I'm so glad she joined us for this experience. Um, she has a tremendous amount of um, experience and passion to make a difference, and I, um, I truly believe that she's doing that. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm not sure how my Friday mornings are gonna go from now on. <laughs> so I really would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone. It's been an amazing experience to learn about how many talented people we can put together in one room at one time, whether it's online or in person. Um, so I really wanna thank you for your expertise, for your support um, and everything that you've provided. Um, I loved the opportunity to participate in LEND, although I remember the first, um, first day that we met, um, Steve said, Rachel, why do you look so scared? And I'm like, <laughs> wow, my picture, I look so scared, I think. Um, and it was that idea of being open and being vulnerable, but you guys have created such a safe space. Um, what I'll take away from LEND is really learning amazing opportunities to look at everybody's expertise. So when we take care of a patient or we take care of a family, to know what everyone can bring to the table and to know when to reach out um, outside of our discipline. So I really wanna thank you for that. So. Thank you, Rachel. Gonna miss you all. Our next um, fellow is Regina Lomeglio. Um, Regina was, is originally from the Southern Tier um, but Rochester, New York has been her home for the last 25 years. Um, Regina also brings a, a many, many years of experiences as a pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, and I was delighted when I learned that she too had joined um, the Kirsch um, Center for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. Um, what amazing team that they make um, being, being there. And it was a pleasure actually um, um, joining them the one day to really get the tour of the whole building and really to see how um, how important the work that they are doing and the contributions that they're making. Um, she describes her new role there as her dream job. And you can really tell that in um, how her eyes just sparkle whenever she's talking about what she's doing. Um, she absolutely loves working with children, um, particularly children with developmental disabilities and their families, and helping them to really learn and grow together. And I think that is one of the major contributions that Regina has made in LEND, um, as well as in her, in her job, um, is really, really helping children and families to do things together and really involving them in every aspect of care. Um, she loves to listen, educate, motivate, and advocate for children who have disabilities in their families. Um, Regina, throughout the program, has shared valuable insights from her years of experiences. And um, she just beams when she talks about the work that she's doing. And she has made incredible contributions to pediatric nursing for many years. And I truly look forward to the continued work that she'll do, particularly now with all of this background and experience she's had with Blend. Um, congratulations, Regina. Thank you very much, Kathy. And um, big thank you to everyone involved um, in our Lund program and all of um, my Lund fellows and uh, the families and friends that support each and every one of us. Um, 
I've known about the LEND program for about two decades and understood, you know, its importance for teaching emergent leaders, you know, through this interdisciplinary approach. And I had always wanted to um, have the opportunity um, because I really feel it's, it's an honor to be in this fellowship. Um, I was offered this opportunity and support to join this fellowship by my colleagues through developmental and behavioral pediatrics and jumped jumped on it like yes when how um so thank you kathy for being our my direct mentor uh throughout this process too um although you know I, I i hate to bring up the age but it's true i'm a bit advanced in my age and in my professional <laughs> career but still going strong and hope to be doing this at 90. um and the lens fellowship has really given me the opportunity um to have varied what I feel are immersion experiences that really have deepened my overall knowledge and understanding of people with physical and intellectual disabilities within the context of their families, friends, and community. Um, I've learned about advocacy and how to advocate. I, I really um, have a newfound desire to become more politically active and uh, we'll seek out some of the um, advocates in our fellowship program on how to uh, move that forward. Um, I've gained knowledge and understanding certainly about local, regional, and national resources, and I've already been sharing those with families that I serve on a daily basis. Um, it truly is the person with disabilities that is rich in humanity, and it's through an attitude of caring assistance and solidarity that all of us can achieve full integration and inclusion of, of people with disabilities. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks, Regina. And our final um, uh, nursing uh, LEN fellow is um, the, the youngest to the nursing profession, and that is Tanya May. And Tanya is from Rochester, New York. Um, she currently is in the Psych Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program at the U of R School of Nursing. Um, she's had some vast experiences already early in her career, has worked as an employment specialist and nurse for Heritage Christian Services, um, a direct support professional for lifetime assistance, an employee special, employment specialist for Starbridge, and a registered nurse in the Comprehensive Psychiatric Emergency Program and currently is working at Strong Ties. Um, she is passionate about patient care um, and the patient experience. Um, she truly believes that empathy is a huge part of nursing along with an important part of healing. Um, she has truly focused on those aspects um, really throughout her, her young career so far. Um, she really has a vast knowledge in, in these areas and her commitment to the psych mental health needs of children and their families has just been incredible. And her contributions already um, are really worth applauding. Um, she also believes that, the, that she brings the spirit of nursing um, in everything that she does. Um, she has um, she had shared with me, and I truly, and, you know, I absolutely believe that she's dedicated, determined, and always curious to learn more. And I think we saw that really in, in every aspect of the program with her presentations, with her ideal projects, with sharing of experiences. And she um, really has a, a sincere, um, an in, immense and intense amount of compassion. And you can really see that in her eyes when, when she is presenting or really talking about the children and the families um, that she has encountered. Um, really proud of you, Tanya, and I look forward to continuing to see the impact you're gonna have in your field. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you to everyone in LEND. Um, I came across LEND during my degree planning with Dr. Holly Brown. She had seen all my past involvement with um, the field of development disabilities and really recommended this program. And immediately I was like, yes, it's something I haven't done before, I have to do it. Um, so I got involved with the program and I guess I didn't really understand what I was getting involved with until I got here. I think the best part or the most impactful part that I'll take away from this is the advocacy. I have always been such a strong advocate for my patients. I don't believe in someone telling me, no, we can't do that. I think that there's a way to get it done. But I've hit a wall at times where it's above the hospital 
and now something else has to change. And I never knew how to do that. I never knew that you can go visit Congress, women or men. I never knew that you can go to Capitol Hill or send emails and give them information. I just, that was like beyond my knowledge. So I think that that's a huge part that I'm going to take away going further in my career as a psych nurse practitioner. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. This has been such a great experience getting to know everyone. And I hope that we all stay in touch because I really think that our connections will benefit us in the future. Thank you, Tanya. And you know, I definitely you know, want to thank Lynn Brown and Holly, um, Lynn Cole and Holly Brown for their work um, with the with the fellows. And and it's just so wonderful to have, you know, five new dynamic nursing led fellows to enter enter the profession and um, we're all very fortunate to have you. Thank you. Yes, <clears throat> thank you and congratulations. So now to honor our PT fellows, I wanna introduce discipline coordinator, Michelle Donahue, and um, also just recognize clinical supervisor, Amy Peet. Michelle. Thank you. Good morning, welcome. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This year I had the pleasure to work with two wonderful PT fellows. Both fellows are from Nazareth College, which is where I teach, and they've worked very, very hard over the last six years. They've earned their bachelor's degree in health science and their doctor of physical therapy degree last week. So um, if, if you don't know, physical therapists are providers that really work and diagnose and treat movement impairments, and we do that to reduce pain. We do that to restore function and prevent disability. And the beauty of our profession is we get to work with folks across the lifespan in all different settings. While pediatrics in physical therapy is kind of a smaller area of practice, there's huge impact that we can have in the lives of not only the families that we serve, not only the kids that we serve, but also the families as well. Um, so our two fellows, um, as part of their degree program at Nazareth, both worked in the same group to complete a two-year research project that explored the demographics of motor coordination problems in children. And they worked very hard. They were able to identify some prevalence demographics and risk factors uh, for kids developing developmental coordination disorder in Western New York. And they presented their research at Nazareth on April 21st. So um, the, one of our first fellow is Andrea Lenard. Um, Andrea completed a clinical education experience at Spencer Ward School District, and she also did a second clinical experience working with adults with developmental disabilities in addition to two other, two other clinical experiences in different settings during her PT degree program. She also spent some time working in the Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics Clinic throughout the year as her schedule allowed. Our guys are, are pretty busy, so uh, sometimes they have to be creative to get that experience, but she was able to spend some time over at clinic with everybody. Um, and she also is someone who, um, I, would, I would see at Special Olympic events. She was very happy to volunteer uh, to participate in Special Special Olympics events. Um, and Andrea just has the most wonderful way when she's with patients of listening and understanding and being empathetic, you know, with families and working collaboratively to help them to meet their needs and figure out what's best for them. Um, so I'm excited that um, she does have a job lined up after um, the next couple of weeks. She's from Hornell and will be returning home to Hornell to be working at Maple City physical therapy. It's an outpatient orthopedic clinic. So she'll be doing some outpatient orthopedics and also school-based therapy as uh, they serve some of the local school districts there. So congratulations, Andrea. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I was led to lend through Dr. Donahue. She had presented the opportunity to us um, in our pediatrics class. And having a strong interest in working in the school-based setting, um, I wanted to jump on the opportunity in order to gain more knowledge um, and increase my skills with policy advocacy and interdisciplinary care um, in order to feel more prepared in entering the field. 
Uh, Lend has been an incredible growth opportunity for me, in which I'll take many things from. Um, one of them being uh, just being able to define myself as a leader and an advocate. That's not something that I would have defined myself as prior to this year. And also the importance and power of collaborative care and how to build strong relationships with families, individuals, and other providers in order to provide a high level of care. So just wanna thank all the LEND trainees and the staff for um, this incredible opportunity and I'm excited to take these skills forward. Thanks, Andrea. And our um, second PT fellow this year is Amy Shirtliff. Amy is from Rochester um, and she did her clinical experiences here in Rochester. She did an early intervention and preschool clinical rotation at Rochester Hearing and Speech. And she also was able to complete a clinical experience with adults with developmental disabilities. Like Amy, she or like Andrea, she also was able to spend some time in the developmental and behavioral pediatrics clinic throughout the year. Again, being very creative with scheduling. Um, PTs are flexible, so both of our fellows have learned to be very flexible with their busy schedules. Um, Amy also completed two other clinical education experiences through her education at Nazareth um, and learned how much she really enjoyed the inpatient setting. So right now she's, you know, kind of focused on getting ready for the licensure exam and, you know, looking for exciting job opportunities, either in the inpatient setting, possibly outpatient neuro or school-based. So congratulations, Amy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Donahue. <laughs> Um, similar to Andrea, I learned about the LEND program through Donahue in our pediatrics course, and it really resonated with me because I've always known that a career in pediatrics would be something that I would be interested in, and I know that there's a lot of special considerations that you need to have when working with pediatrics that um, you don't get through the typical PT uh, curriculum. You kind of have to seek it out on your own. And I thought that the LEND program would be a really good way to do that. And it definitely met my expectations in that regard. Um, one thing that I'll take away from the LEND program is um, that no matter what you do, it doesn't mean anything unless the individual and their family are on board with it. You could think that this is like the best thing for them, but um, you don't share that viewpoint, it doesn't mean anything. So you have to really um, do everything from their lens and take everything into consideration that they want from you. Congratulations, Amy. Congratulations, Andrea. Thank you. Congratulations, both of you. Um, next, we have the public health discipline. Um, Peter Vizi is our discipline coordinator, but he was unable to join us today. So I'm going to present on his behalf. Um, so I wanted to congratulate Julie Kittle Mosley, um, who is our public health fellow. Um, Julie is originally from Charlottesville, Virginia, but has moved around a lot in her life also living in Pennsylvania, Texas, and currently in New York. She has a bachelor and master's degree in psychology and worked at the VA before starting her public health graduate work at the University of Rochester. She's passionate about research, collaboration, and discovering new ways to translate research into practice. As a PhD student in epidemiology, Julie just yesterday presented her dissertation work entitled In Transition, physical function, mental health, and social support in cancer survivors entering survivorship. So congratulations, Julie, on this wonderful accomplishment. You must be so excited to be done with your dissertation, at least for now. Um, throughout the year in LEND, um, we've all benefited from Julie's thoughtful contributions during core course sessions and her interdisciplinary activities, including her integrated public health and psychology perspective. Additionally, Julie has demonstrated 
her clear willingness to learn from all disciplines with ongoing interest and skill in fostering interdisciplinary partnership between self-advocates, researchers, and practitioners. Please join me in celebrating Julie's graduation from the LEND Fellowship Program. Congratulations, Julie. Thanks, Laura. Uh, I should clarify that I did not defend my dissertation. Oh. I proposed my dissertation. Oh, okay. Well, so. <laughs> not proposing. One step closer. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not quite done yet, but uh, um, I did. When, when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so I, um, I really enjoy participating in LEND. I, I find that a lot of times in research, we don't um, we don't get the lived experience perspective. We don't hear about advocacy, and we don't get the opportunity to take our research and convert it into policy, or you know, use it in a way that would help people. So, uh, what I really wanted um, from the Lend program was to to get that experience to to learn from advocates, to learn from clinicians, and learn from everyone else to inform my research and my career going forward. And I think I really um, have learned a lot. Um, it's been wonderful working with everyone in all the different disciplines and seeing everyone's perspectives. So thank you, everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations, Julie. So honorar psychology fellow now, I'm going to introduce back um, here, Laura Silverman. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so I wanted to congratulate Allison Jordan, Ali, for um, completing the LEND Fellowship this year. Um, Allie's originally from Syracuse, New York. She attended the University of Rochester as an undergraduate. And even when she was in high school, she knew that she wanted to work with children with autism and wrote about it in her college essay as a goal. Um, while at the University of Rochester, she started working in Dr. Tris Smith's lab um, and studied treatment approaches for young children with autism who were minimally verbal. She spent two years as a research assistant in his lab following her graduation, and then went on to earn a PhD in counseling psychology and school psychology at the University at Buffalo. Her dissertation focused on discrepancies between parent and teacher ratings in the everyday um, abilities of people with autism. Following gra graduate school, Ali did her psychology internship at Nationwide Hospital at Ohio State, and then she just couldn't resist the draw of Rochester and returned back for her postdoc. Um, Ali loves working with kids between the ages of four and six in particular, and she came to Rochester because it gave her an opportunity to do both research and clinical work, which in the field of psychology is really sometimes hard to come by. During this year, um, I've been really impressed by Ali's calm, gentle approach with children and families in diagnostic clinic. She helps even the most nervous children feel comfortable and gives them space to show who they really are. Ali came to us with strong skills in behavior-based treatments and diagnosis, but has soaked up information and is, and is a talented practitioner who is both thoughtful and compassionate. She also contributes to our research program by studying best practice approaches for teaching language in very young children with autism. We are so happy that Ali is with us and will be with us for a second year of her postdoc next year. And I also just want to say that since um, COVID has started, um, Ali has continued to see all of her patients remotely. Um, this has been really challenging for our psychology group because we very rapidly had to learn a lot of new um, systems and assessments and create interventions in a short period of time to meet the needs of our families. And I often forget that Allie's a postdoc <laughs> because she's so good at just adjusting to the situation and making really thoughtful decisions about how to proceed clinically. So I wanted to thank Allie for her clinical maturity and her thoughtfulness. 
during this time. Thanks, Ali. Congratulations. Thanks, Laura. That was so nice. Um, I love being back with everyone here at U of R. Um, and like Laura had said, um, I've kind of heard about the LEND program for a long time, um, having been here you know, prior to graduate school. And I've had a lot of friends and coworkers who've gone through the program. And so I was really excited that this was going to be um, a component of my first year of fellowship training um, coming back here to U of R. Um, and as Laura said, I've had a lot of work with um, children with autism specifically and their families, but was really excited about the opportunity to kind of build my broader context um, around working with those families um, through this fellowship. Um, and also really focusing on some of those leadership and um, advocacy components that, you know, are really critical for being for a working psychologist, but weren't as much of a focus um, within my training experience. Um, and then finally, just being able to learn with and from such a diverse group of fellows and faculty. Um, and I feel like I was really able to achieve those goals through the LEND Fellowship um, and really able to reflect on like how communication and the language that we use really matters, um, especially with spending so much of my role in either giving verbal or written feedback to families and just able to use the tools um, from that and both the leadership and advocacy components um, to kind of shape how I work with families. Um, and then also just having a great group of collaborators to really have an immersive experience in working on an interdisciplinary team. So um, it's been a great year. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Thanks. Okay. We've made it to our final discipline, um, speech and language pathology. So, oh, we have two more. Oh, sorry, two more. <laughs> <laughs> almost there, almost there. Almost there. Um, so I'd like to introduce um, Don Vogler Elias, um, who will um, introduce our speech and language pathology fellows. Yes, so we had two speech language pathology fellows this year. Um, I'll talk about speech pathology more broadly and then talk specifically about each of them. So um, speech language pathologists support a variety of different areas, including communication, speech, language, cognition, and then also feeding and swallowing for individuals across the lifespan. Um, and so both of our trainees this year are in the second year of their master's program. It was for, you know, as we have, many of us have experienced, it's been quite an unusual experience for them because they were, um, all of our students in our program typically graduate in August in the summer. And so at the spring point in their second year, they are really um, in the midst of their full-time clinical practicum experience that's out in the community and then they do another one of those experiences in the summer so they're really at that point where they're doing all the things that their undergraduate and graduate coursework has prepared them to do for the many years before and because of our COVID situation they were both um, th both of those experiences were disrupted and in our program we really don't know completely what's going to be happening over the summer we're hoping we're hoping as schools have virtual experiences and things that we'll be able to have them finish up their program this summer, but there's a lot of uncertainty and we don't know. And I will just say that both of the trainees for LEND, they have been, you know, in the superstar group of students who have just taken it in stride and been so, um, you know, at least outwardly so um, reasonable about some of the uncertainty and the and the challenges that we don't know what's happening because I think that that can be very scary and very stressful to you know have worked so hard for something and not know what's happening so I just want to applaud them for that their the poise with which they've they've taken on that challenge has really impressed me um, so first we have Maddie Brown and she is from Vermont um, she went to Syracuse University undergrad so um, we share that in common, so she always has had a special place in my heart because of that. Um, she also completed the autism specialization at Nazareth, um, and she has a 
I, I think, you know, one thing that I, as I was reflecting on both of these students, one thing that I always appreciate about Maddie is she is so honest and I always know what she's thinking in her ch and and I just I love that in a student and I really appreciate that because if she doesn't understand something or she's thinking something that's the total opposite of someone else she will um, say that and I think that that honesty can be a real strength um, for her for the autism specialization she completed a really um, the students have to do a capstone project for that and her project was really so fun. She created a YouTube channel. Um, it was called Preparation of Educators Who Instruct Students on the Autism Spectrum Disorder. But she created a YouTube channel that really capitalized on that honesty that she has. And she made some video posts about her own journey in being a novice professional and what it's like to be learning and growing and developing skills. Um, so that was really impressive. She has completed several practicum experiences. She's going to be staying in Rochester with us and she hopes to work in the schools. Um, so congratulations, Maddie, and I'll turn it over to her. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been a wild year. I know a lot of people have had the same kind of interruptions with their work or their program, so it's been crazy to go through that with you guys. Um, I, I didn't really find Lend. Lend found me a little bit. Um, Dr. V.E. usually sends out um, opportunities or whatever through the um, through the program email, and I kind of I probably deleted it to be honest. The first one I, <laughs> I got rid of it, um, and I'm not usually one to go out of my comfort zone in school. I usually do my program, I do my classes, and then I'm done. Um, but she approached me separately and and said, "You should check this out and you should look into it because I think you would like it," and she was right. Um, and I really think that one of the biggest things that I took away from this program was um, learning how to step back and kind of reflect a little bit. I think a lot of times in our specific disciplines, we tend to live in a little bit of a bubble and we think that our discipline is the most important thing. And um, it's, it's hard to step out of that and think about the person in front of you or the family in front of you and what they experience and the things that they're coming to you with. And, I think especially through my um, family experience and then just listening to advocates and um, group speakers just kind of stepping back and thinking about how I need to leave my judgments and my preconceived notions and all of that at the door um, when working with clients or kids or families. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody. Thanks for being here and thanks for a good year. And so next we have Juliana Slajewski. I think I said it right, Juliana. I had to have her send it to me phonetically this week because I, I just, I have trouble with her last name. But um, so Juliana is, she completed her undergraduate work at UB and she also did the autism specialization at NAS and her project was also very interesting in that it was inclusion of students with autism in middle school and she developed some programming to really support um, teaching middle school students about neurodiversity and um, inclusion and really building up some friendship pieces at that middle school age. So I think that's a really exciting project um, that she did. And um, she has done a student teaching at school 19 and also CAFL. She's hoping to work in um, the schools or in early intervention once she graduates. And over the summer, we're actually still hoping that she'll be able to do her final practicum, which was is a program that we have with Autism Up that's focused on um, augmentative communication for children who are um, who use AAC devices. So I think that she may be still planning on doing that. Um, I what I always you know reflecting on Juliana as a learner, she is so focused and dedicated and. Um, just so positive about all of her educational experiences. And she 
is an amazing writer. Whenever I get any of her work, I've always, her papers, it's always one of the ones as a professor that I'm like, oh, let me think of some positive comment I can put on here because it's really such, such good work. There's not a lot of critiquing that can go into it. So she's just a, you know, a really, really outstanding student. Um, and I'm glad that she's going to be staying in Rochester as well so we can continue to stay in touch. So I'm very proud of her. Thank you, Dr. V. <laughs> um, I just wanted to start off by thanking everybody for being here today. And I also want to thank all of the faculty and the trainees who have really helped me to grow and learn throughout this entire year. Um, I've always been interested and really, really passionate about working with individuals with autism and other developmental disabilities ever since my undergraduate at the University at Buffalo. And what really drew me to Nazareth and to the Rochester area was um, that autism specialty program. It was a wonderful experience learning about individuals on the spectrum and working with other disciplines at Nazareth. So when Dr. V.E. presented the LEND Fellowship to us, I knew that it was going to be an experience that I was going to love too. Um, what I'm going to take away is just having a greater understanding of neurodevelopmental disabilities how I can best support individuals with, indi with disabilities um, and their families in my future practice as an SLP. And now I'm so grateful to have so many connections in the community who have a wealth of knowledge that I can really lean on in my future practice. Um, I really loved all of our discussions throughout the year and how open and vulnerable everybody has been um, and creating that safe space for us to talk. And I've learned so much from everybody's lived experiences to help me see things from a different perspective. Um, the friendships and the connections that I've made through the program will definitely continue on. And I hope that we all stay in touch. So thank you all for this awesome experience. I loved it. Thank you so much. So um, last, but most certainly not least, I'm going to introduce Discipline Coordinator Pam Vigiani, who is going to honor our Social Work Fellow. Good morning, everyone. I guess I saved the best for last, contrary to what you said, JD. Um, I'm Pam Vigiani, and I'm the Social Work Discipline Coordinator. I um, teach at Brockport College in their MSW program. A little bit about the discipline of social work. Um, I think one of the ways we can uh, really define social work is by its primary mission, which is to really enhance human well-being and meet basic and complex needs of all people. And social work particularly um, focuses on those who are vulnerable, oppressed, and or living in poverty. Um, we want to look at both internal and external factors that impact a person's situation and their lives. We work with people in many capacities, which is a great um, strength of social work, but it also causes many people not to understand what social work does. Uh, in terms of the field of disability, um, we work with children and their families, their individuals. We help, we advocate for individuals. We help them navigate themselves and access resources. We help families and children and support them in many ways, including with um, group and individual interventions. Um, there's many other things that we do, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. Well, I had the great pleasure of having Whitney Fairchild as a social work LEND fellow this year. She also was, has been our GA in the um, Brockport MSW program for two years where she has really done a phenomenal job of increasing our opportunities for students to be together in many ways. Um, I cannot even begin to express how wonderful it has been to have Whitney as part of this team. Her passion for the field of social work and for work with those with disabilities has shown in her contributions throughout the year. I think she embodies all that it is to be a social worker. Whitney is from Castleton, New York, which is near Albany. She came to Rochester to study music therapy at Nazareth College, and she completed a degree in music therapy at Nazareth College. After getting her bachelor's degree, she entered um, the program, the, our MSW program, which previously had been a collaborative between Nazareth and Brockport College, but now is a standalone program of Brockport. And in fact, she just, um, completed her MSW and celebrated with a Zoom graduation last night. 
Um, so this is her second graduation in less than 24 hours. Uh, while completing her MSW, she worked um, with our LEND colleague, Don Vogler Elias and others as she completed the I-SPAN, which as you know, is the interdisciplinary specialty program in autism. And that prepared her to work with other professionals um, um, with individuals with autism across the lifespan using a person-centered approach, which fits so well with social work. Her work at, as a music therapy intern at Mary Carey at Ola cemented her desire to work um, in the field of disability. Doing creative work and engaging kids with disability is what she did as a music therapist there. Her greatest passion is connecting with people, kids, teens, adults, and doing that in a creative way um, through music, art, play. She likes to think out of the box to create effective interventions for kids and families. Um, as Whitney um, moves on to graduation, she has several opportunities uh, for jobs, one at which she would like to continue with Mary Cariola in a job there. Um, so congratulations on your second graduation in less than 24 hours, and I'm excited to see where you land and what you do, Whitney. Thanks, Pam. Um, so I knew from Pam's recommendation that Lend would be a really great experience, but um, it's been so much more than I expected. Um, like Pam was mentioning, I, I completed the ISPAN program at Nazareth with Dr. V.E. Um, and was excited to hear that I would get to work with Dr. V.E. again and also with Pam, um, learning more about how I can support individuals with developmental disabilities and their families as a social worker. Lend has been a great experience for me in learning more about the experience of families, um, personally getting to know a lot of different families and collaborating with other disciplines in the field. Um, I'm gonna be a broken record here. Lend has given me the opportunity to learn more about advocacy overall. Um, JD and Carrie are all definitely gonna need some t-shirts made now for advocacy. Um, it's opened my eyes further to how I can advocate for people with disabilities, but also empower people throughout my career, whether it be encouraging families, individuals, or other professionals to advocate for themselves. Um, so overall, Lend and my family, or my fellow fellows have challenged me to think differently about disability um, and how we respond to the needs of our community and how we respond to what everyone at the table has to say. Uh, I've met some great friends and colleagues, and I thank you all for your support and your friendship throughout the year, and I hope to see you all soon in person. So congratulations, everyone. We made it through graduation, even in a virtual form. Um, and someday we will give you hard copy certificates, but for now, um, you have your virtual copies. Um, you all earned it. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say before we moved on that, um, you know, LEND is really a network. And so even though we're done with LEND for this academic year, I want you to remember that we can all stay in touch. And I think that our group will be working on ways to make sure that we can um, network and be in touch with each other, both both locally, but also you're, as LEND graduates, you're part of a, re of a national network. So if you ever move, you can always reach out to LEND graduates in other places. Um, so we'll miss all of you. I never thought that I would say that I'll miss spending three and a half hours Friday, first thing Friday morning with a group of people virtually, but I actually well, it's been really nice and sort of comforting to have um, the stability of our LEND meetings, especially right now. So thank you all um, for participating and congratulations. We'd love to hear where you end up and what you all do. So um, 
I also wanted to thank Marlene LaDuke and Mark Williams for making LEN possible. Um, Marlene couldn't be here this morning, but sent me this photo. Mark would not send me a photo despite lots of nagging. So um, <laughs> I just wanted to acknowledge both of them for all of their um, support because without them, um, we probably wouldn't be here virtually. <laughs> um, so they've done so much for our program. Um, and then I just wanted to also um, bring us back to Kristen, who wasn't able to make it this morning, but she's left a message for you um, because she's been um, central to your leadership training. We thought that it would be important to um, share a message from her. So here it is. Hello, LENS graduates, class of 2020. I'm so sorry that I was unable to be with you in real time to help you celebrate, but I am thrilled to have this opportunity to make this video and share my best wishes. I wanted to share with you what I have noticed in the brief and wonderful time that we have been together. For example, one of the things that I've noticed is how you've demonstrated the ability to connect and relate to everyone and to be responsive. All have been available and reliable, self-accountable, organized, and willing to listen. You have stretched yourselves to learn ways that you can use your privilege to advocate for others and make space for other voices to be included. Together, we've learned how we can establish shared vision and values to accomplish common goals. And throughout your entire time at LEND, you've demonstrated that you're willing to roll up your sleeves and do the work, able to delegate without micromanaging, with awareness to your peers, distinct strengths and expertise. I know that whatever you do, you will enact leadership as a choice rather than as a rank and abide by a call of action to lead and not command. Your actions will be rooted in your integrity. I know that you will embrace your weakness, accept feedback, and will establish feedback councils to support and guide you. I know that you will keep yourself and those you work with focused on common goals and the trajectory of those goals. And above all, you will be transparent, practice humility, and empower others to make change while inspiring others to have passion and compassion. If any of those qualities, characteristics, or aspirations sound familiar, it's because they are the exact words that you all use to define effective leaders when we met way back in September at the Out Alliance. I am confident that you will continue to enact the leadership that you envisioned that day. It's been a joy working with you. It's been a treasure learning from you. And I wish each and every one of you the very best the world has to offer. From all the peace that I can muster, I wish you all the best. Thank you for sharing your time with me and congratulations. Hello, Lens. So Marlene and I did not coordinate this at all. So that is pretty neat. But um, some of you, I was going to say some of you may recognize this t-shirt and I see in the chat box many of you already have. This t-shirt belongs to my friend and fierce advocate JD Flores. About a year and a half ago, JD and I traveled together to Washington for the annual AUCD Disability Conference. At that time, I was able to get a small glimpse of life through her eyes and share in some really meaningful for me conversations. That's when JD first introduced me to this phrase, you can only see me if you see me. This hit hard. Like each of you, I am continually learning what it means to really see someone, including and especially if that someone is an individual with a disability. A year ago, you saw something that sparked your interest in this LEND program. Some of you live with disability. Many of you have personal connections to disability, and most of you have professional experiences with disability. You are graduating from LEND today with added focus and a deeper shared vision and renewed passion. As you embark on future journeys, you will carry forward this focus and this vision and this passion. You will take what you have learned here and teach others how to see individuals with disabilities. 
first and foremost as human beings with valuable experiences to share. As you know, seeing someone means hearing them. You will continue to partner, we hope, with one another as self-advocates, family advocates, and professional advocates on behalf of the needs and rights of individuals with disabilities. As you know, seeing someone means speaking up. Thank you for investing in us this year. It has been a true pleasure to learn alongside you. And thank you for your ongoing commitment to making this world a place where individuals with disabilities are seen and heard and valued and respected. Next slide, Laura. So be safe, be well, and please do keep in touch. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Shall we do a group photo? Sure. Ooh. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> do it. Okay, that'd be great. Get everyone. Laura, I think maybe if you stop sharing your screen, everybody's faces can pop up. Okay. Yep. Let's see if I can do. Um, hang on. There we go. Okay, we're gonna have to do um. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Cheese. That work? Let me see if it worked. Let me see if that worked. You never know with technology, right? Mm -hmm. It did. So let me save this first image and then we'll do the second one for because we all can't fit on the same screen. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, y'all. All right, page two. Beautiful faces, right? Everyone, Clara, are you gonna turn your screen on? We can't see you. Oh, you're there. Okay, I see you. All right, one, two, three. And I think. Ah, I got it. Cool. <laughs> I will email that out to everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for joining us. We'll miss you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye guys. Good luck Bye, with everything. You soon, hopefully.